Well, we've got uh, to talk about Vince. Here's the latest. Identities of several WWE corporate officers listed in Janelle Grant's lawsuit against Vince McMahon, John Laurinaitis, and WWE have been revealed. WWE President Nick Khan has been identified as corporate officer number one in the suit. Company COO Brad Bloom is the employer referred to as corporate officer number two. Corporate officer number three listed in the suit has been identified as Stephanie McMahon. Corporate officer number four listed in the suit has been revealed to be former head of the WWE legal department, Brian Nurse. So these names came out yesterday. And uh, what does this mean? Well, I went back and read a lot of the lawsuit yesterday because I want to be very clear about all of this. I think what is abundantly clear here is that all four of these people, well, Nick Khan, I think all four of them, all four of them were aware that Vince was having a relationship with Janelle Grant. Did any of them know that he was raping or sexually trafficking Janelle Grant? There is nothing in the suit that I would say is evidence that they did. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. But Stephanie, for example, I mean... For weeks now, probably longer, people have been talking about Triple H. Triple H must have known all of this. Stephanie had to know all of this. How how could Stephanie know and not tell Triple H? Well, if you read the lawsuit, knowing that Stephanie McMahon is corporate officer number three, there are literally two sentences, two sentences in the entire lawsuit about Stephanie McMahon. One of them is that Stephanie invited Janelle Grant to sit next to her in a meeting? And the other is that Janelle Grant believes that Stephanie McMahon knew about other... I forget the exact term right here. Other, uh... Essentially, she knew... Oh, her father had... Enga- she may have known of other instances of her father engaging in inappropriate sexual conduct. Okay. Now, yeah, I guess it's new information that Stephanie is corporate officer number three, but... Obviously, Stephanie McMahon knew that her father had been involved in inappropriate sexual conduct. Vince McMahon himself had talked about this in interviews. Vince McMahon had talked about this under oath. Like, everybody knew that. But did she know that he was raping and sexually trafficking Janelle Grant? We don't know that. We don't know that about any of the individuals whose names came out. So, that's what's next. That's what we need to find out. And right now we don't know those answers. So a lot of these questions are going to be directed at Nick Khan. Uh, The front office sports article that came out yesterday, which is written by Tim Marshman of uh, he was formerly of vice and in conjunction with John Pollock and Brandon Thurston from post and Russell nomics, they listed all four of the folks, and when it comes to Nick Khan, there are two very specific paragraphs in the lawsuit, and they go like this. Following Ms. Grant's messages to McMahon on March 9th, 2021, McMahon summoned Ms. Grant to his condo that evening for a conversation during which McMahon confirmed that WWE Corporate Officer 1 Nick Khan indeed knew exactly who she was as McMahon had privately met with corporate officer number one and number two, which would be Bloom, and advised these individuals of McMahon's connection to Miss Grant. In section 246, right underneath that, McMahon continued this conversation by detailing to Miss Grant that they had expressed concern but were ultimately supportive. McMahon also advised Miss Grant that one or both of the corporate officers inquired whether Miss Grant could be trusted and that McMahon offered assurances that Miss Grant would not do something to hurt WWE. Now, those two specific points WWE responded to by saying that 
They take the obviously the allegations very seriously, but that neither Nick Khan nor Brad Bloom prior to the lawsuit being filed were aware of any allegation that Miss Grant of Miss Grant that she was the victim of abuse or unwanted physical contact and then went on to say that neither one of them prior to the lawsuit being filed uh, again, this never happened is essentially what they're saying. These conversations, at least according to a WWE sports spokesperson, they are saying that they never happened. So really, when it comes to Nick Khan, a lot of it, he has spoken about this. He is. So now it's just kind of putting the timeline together and really being able to question him to figure out exactly when conversations took place and as an example did this one actually happen so i guess that's going to come out here in the wash uh relatively soon you know i, I would assume the further this thing goes but you know khan seems to be he's the one out of anybody here and obviously stephanie as well too but since he's there you know in the public one of the public faces of that company he to me has got some more things that he needs to answer to and some more things that you know people have questions about as far as the timeline goes sure everyone does all four of these people i don't know what we're going to get at anybody but um i want to also mention brock because yesterday uh, the story came out we talked about it on observer radio that he was, I guess, what was it, back on the roster page? Like he'd been removed and was put back on? Yeah. And then, you know, yesterday, I guess the, uh, I guess it came out that he was never off the actual roster page, so he was not put back on the roster page. So I don't know what's going on with the roster page, but I can tell you this for sure. Forget the roster page. There were a lot of things involving Brock Lesnar that after this whole thing came out, ties, cut ties. You know, obviously, one of the more obvious ones was, uh, you know, they were going to do the Gunther Brock Lesnar match. That is off the table, as was made clear yesterday. And also, I believe that Brock is, is out of the video game. I can't confirm that because I've never played this video game, but I believe that is the case that he's no longer in the video game. And there were other things involving Brock Lesnar as well. They were, you know, Brock was out, okay? Whether he was removed from the roster page or not, they 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 stopped doing a number of things involving Brock. Well, in the last few days, which ties into the story of him being returned to the roster page, even though he was not, uh, there have been moves regarding Brock Lesnar, which uh, if you listen to the show last night with Dave, everything we talked about accurate other than the roster page. There are movements to bring him back. So we can talk more about that after the break. Observer Live. In the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. I should add regarding Brock, I'm not saying he's going to be back. I have no idea if he's going to be back. I wouldn't bring him back. But I can tell you that there have been inquiries made. And what that means, we will wait and see. But it seems, it seems like a bad idea to me put it that well, way if you're looking at this under the tko umbrella i mean look at what they deal with on the ufc side of things look at what dana white did look at what sean strickland says every time he opens up his mouth you know there needs to be probably more of a pushback a collective pushback and it's probably going to have to be more than just the online wrestling fans and the folks listening to this show it's going to probably have to be a lot more concentrated i believe and have a bigger concentrated response back if brock lesnar comes back because otherwise if they're looking at this as the bottom line and they're looking at it as things have blown over and we're going to bring this guy back even though we haven't even gotten anything you know further you know really since this whole thing broke i mean Maybe that's just how they're looking at it. Is well, we deal with this all the time on the. Well, you know, here's another one. Blow over. I Here, mean, here's another one. We don't know. Maybe nothing has changed whatsoever, and they just decided, yeah, time has passed. Yeah. Let's bring the guy back. That could be. Maybe more information has come out that they are aware of, where they've decided, you know what, you know, he's he's. I don't know. That's that's the whole thing with this lawsuit. This it's like. The crux of all of it is there's so much we don't know. And 
more needs to come out before we can make declarative statements about a lot of things. This is a very, very serious legal issue. And, you know, my gut says, you know, whatever. That's not going to fly. What do we know? What do we have proof of? I mean, you know we have proof of? That Vince is a horrible person. We've got his text messages. We've got a huge chain of evidence regarding Vince McMahon and also John Laurinaitis. Beyond that, right now, we don't. And I know that, you know, everybody has their gut feeling about a lot of things. I do as well. But what do we know? What do we have proof of? That's where we're at right now. And there are and a, a lot, lot of- more needs to come out. Yes, and there's a lot of really good reporters and really good journalists doing things, whether it be, you know, Pollock and Marshawn and Thurston or the Wall Street Journal folks. A lot of people are digging in because you look back at things that may drive in and may tie into this. Remember when Stephanie left? Remember when Stephanie all of a sudden got buried? Then all of a sudden when Stephanie came back because Vince was out and then all of a sudden this woman who was doing a horrible job is now the CEO. All of these things, and there's so many other sub-stories that come off of it that I know people are doing boots-on-the-ground journalism for. So, again, this is a tough story because it's an awful, awful story. But we do, there is some, there is a level, and I understand people's really getting upset and frustrated about it, but there is a, a level here where things hopefully all come out in... Again, if if this woman is not looking to settle, then we are going to find out a whole lot. If she's willing to take this and other people are willing to take this all the way to the end without a settlement, so things get hidden again, we're going to find out a lot more. And I have faith in the same way that we're seeing things come out. It may not be all the time every day like we want it to, but just like yesterday, the news coming out about officially, these are the four folks who they are talking about, to throw out any thought that maybe one was Paul Levesque or maybe somebody was this person, it came out. So, again, I have a lot of faith in the journalists that are doing the the work on this story, and hopefully they're able to uncover more and connect more dots. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never You'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.